Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. How are we? It's great to be speaking with you. Buy me a coffee. Do the usual if you can. Please help out if you can. I want to keep going. You want me to keep going? Help out. You know, that's the way it works. Better still, become a warrior teacher. But share this. Right, Judy Birchall. Let's talk about Judy Birchall. Also known on the Twitters as Booze and Fags, right? God, love this woman, right? Booze and Fags. And <clears throat> Judy Birchall has written in the uh, Spikes Online. So it's in the, you know, Dubris as usual, if you want to read the article and follow along. But let's have a look at what uh, Judy has to say under the topics of identity politics in the UK. Right. So Judy Birchall. Who I discovered by messaging hasn't watched my videos. So I've sent her a couple. Come on, Judy. Do better. Right. Brighton's local paper, says Judy, the Argus, carries the glad tidings that a local garden centre is to host a half-term event for children. What a lovely idea. Horticulture? We'll soon put a creeper up your trellis. <laughs> it's a bit of that, a bit of the old horticultures. Or they can have a posh person do it and call it horticultures. Stop it. I imagine they'll have a trans activist and call it horticultures. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's try and get past Judy's first line. Apparently, we'll focus teaching children on how to be kind and why this is important. What? I thought it was going to be about plants. Right, how to, how to look... Uh, children will also learn how to look after themselves by eating healthily and talking about their feelings. Uh, it's another one of these um, group hug jobs, isn't it? Out of the mindfulness arse. Isn't it? It's all that stuff, isn't it? Om. Um. <laughs> I mean... I hear Buddhism has fallen as well. So, basically, one, one, one long lesson in how to be a drip. Rather than encourage the outward bound toughness we tried to instill in children back in the 20th century. This is about the infantilization, right? And the emotionalization of children from a very young age. After all, it's not as if mental health of youngsters has got any worse for being overprotected, is it? Which, of course, we definitely know it has. Interestingly, the photograph alongside this irresistible offer features only females and adult and two children. It's conceivable that the staff at Dobby's are all female and that explains the woman. But why are the two children both girls? Don't boys need to focus on how kindness is important too? No. <laughs> Nobody needs to focus on it. Just be it. We may number, no longer accept the old saw boys will be boys as an excuse for everything from arson to zoophilia. <laughs> but the icky... The icky trend for be kind clothing is aimed squarely at one sex. As the social commentator Laura Bishop tells me, while shopping for my kids, I noticed that there are so many items of clothing which say be kind, and they're all in the girls' and the women's section. Every single one. It's like indoctrination. It is indoctrination. Right? So, just to upset some of the women's, you, women, on the whole, not all women, on the whole, are more agreeable than men. So this is appealing to what it knows you are. Fall for it, that's your choice. But you're more agreeable on the whole than men. I've had this conversation with my friends, um, especially the women that are, you know, uh, staunch uh, supporters of women's rights. There'll be some things that they just bulk at that men would just go, do it. Because you are more agreeable than men on the whole. All right, that's what they're doing. They're exploiting your agreeableness. Swine. As if, you know, be kind before. Do you want to be kind or do you want to be effective? Which is it? No, uh, note to clothing manufacturers and retailers, it's not girls who need to be reminding to be kind, judging from the violent crime statistics. Although, of course, the massive imbalance recorded between the sexes has become ever narrower, narrower due to the insane practice of recording cross-dressing male sex offenders as she. Go, Julie! Right? It's going to skew the statistics, isn't it? Enforced kindness started out as a conditioning process for female children. Until recently, it was quite rightly rejected by any fun-loving woman with a soupçon of self-respect. But it was now becoming a shaming mechanism to be used against adult human females who refuse to toe the line. Everything from single-sex toilets to sporting trophies. On the altar of hashtag be kind. That's not Judy, that's me added that, by the way. In this era of gender ideology, women are called upon to give up our rights in our spaces as to appease men who think they are women. 
I grew up in a society which required men to be kind and to flatter men, women to be kind and flatter men. Then came a brief moment of honesty and now the kindly lies have started up again. But even if all this wasn't insulting and inhibiting to women, there also comes a point when affirming so-called trans women is cruel. You will see these men all over social media with faces that only a blind mother could love. <laughs> Soup. Uh, posing in basques and gym slips. Lying in the name of kindness may be a way to avoid hurting people's feelings. No, your bulge doesn't look big in those skin tight ski pants, but it does but it does men who claim they are women no good at all in the long run. This deceitful cheerleading is led by the by a group of women I call the transmaids. Brilliant brilliant the transmaids. Often to be found in the Labour Party. It's their natural home duty, I think. The way things are going, it's entirely likely that the first woman to lead the People's Party will have a penis. <laughs> Brilliant. Cutting. Incisive. Emily Thornbury and other leading Labourites have admitted their stance on trans issues is influenced by them having trans-identified relatives. But a mum's net maverick put it, wanting to be kind and protect a trans cousin or spouse or child or friend is natural, but is not a good enough reason to reorder society. Change the literal meaning of words and remove sex segregation where that matters. The Labour trans maids insist we must deny basic biology or risk causing supposedly unimaginable suffering. Apparently, every time someone says they don't believe trans women are women, somewhere, a transvestite's tight slip. I split, sorry. Ah. It's superb, Judy, it's superb. The moral vacuity and vanity of the trans maids ought to be laughable, but their strange and strong conviction is now harming actual women. They truly are a luxury beliefs. It's highly, unli highly unlikely that the likes of Thornbury, Stella Creasy and Lisa Nandy will ever need a woman's refuge or go to jail. They certainly won't suddenly become little girls again, trying to navigate a strange world where their physical safety comes second to their classmates' feelings. As always, a brilliant piece. There's much more to it than that. Go and read it. Judy, what did I always say? Judy took the time to write it. You can take the time to bloody read it. Go and read it. Right? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But be kind is predominantly aimed at women because it is exploiting women's agreeableness. They're exploiting women's agreeableness to try and make them kinder. Um, from a male perspective, on the other end of the spectrum, they're exploiting men's disagree disagreeableness to try and make them guilty about the fact that they're disagreeable. Disagreeable gets things done, just so you know. Right? Disagreeable gets that thing taken back that you bought that's shite. Disagreeable gets you in the door when somebody's playing silly beggars. Disagreeable changes things. That's why women who are disagreeable get it so hard. That's why when, when a woman is disagreeable, people will go after her like nobody's business. But when men are disagreeable, it's just seen as business as usual. And that's sad. It's a terrible thing, but it's just a thing. Now, there are some women who are more disagreeable than men, and there are some men who are more agreeable than women. But on the whole, the propensity to be agreeable is what women will be, and the propensity to be, to be disagreeable is what men will be. There was a great interview, do you remember, a few years back with Jordan Peterson and Kathy Newman? In which she said, why should I have to pay more for a woman's product than a man? And Jordan said, that's because you're, you're more agreeable. You know what would be more agreeable? Understand what it means to be agreeable and understand what it means to then not be agreeable. Men, you want to tone down your disagreeableness? Then understand what it means to be agreeable. It's not complicated, but it's an individual. It's an individual fight. It's an individual journey to find a way to be disagreeable but, you know, and therefore get what you want. Still a bloody good article. Thanks, Julie. The words drip from the pen and funny they are. You go, you go have a great day. Go read Judy's article. I'll see you later. Bye.